Odin Khan, or Odankin, I'm not quite sure what the name is to be honest, is a new paint brand from Taiwan looking to shake up the hobby world. There are a multitude of paints you can choose from, but the current state of things, getting your hands on your favorite paint brand has proven to be nothing short of an arduous task. So how does Odin Khan stack up? Off the bat, it's a great startup that I feel has a lot of room for growth ahead of it. The presentation of the bottles are nice. I mean, I'm not the type of guy to pay that sort of thing attention, but when it comes to Gumpla, there are people who seem to get all bent out of shape with damaged boxes or that just really care about aesthetics. Not me though, I'm more concerned with the paint itself. The primers, let's start off there because usually when you're painting a model kit, you start with primers. The bottle says everything is pretty thin. I find the primers to be on the thick side of things. I had to keep cleaning my needle as I continued painting. You can thin out the paint and the primers, obviously. It's real easy to miss the mark and then make everything too thin. So it's a very strange balancing act. Hopefully in the future, they get this mixed down right for the primers. This was the biggest issue I had with the paint line was the primers themselves. I will still place it up there in the top four primers I have used. The paint seems to be sturdy when everything is flowing correctly and it adheres to a surface fairly well from what I can tell. I was sent I believe the entire line of Odin Khan's paint, and there are so many colors already from the starting lineup, which is crazy. Usually when most paint brands get off the ground, you probably see like 10 paints at the most, just a handful. But Odin Khan or Odankin has come out with a lot of stuff to choose from. The base colors, I like a lot actually. They come right out of the gate, ready to rock. You pour them in your airbrush and it's just going, which I like. It's a total opposite from the primer. Base colors are just flowing. I love it. Simple, easy, no problem. There is no need for any sort of adjustments. Many of the colors are beautiful, I might add, with great levels of pigmentation. And if you feel the need or you want to come up with a really crazy custom color that is rich in just obviously color, Odin Khan also comes with three bottles of prime colors. So that's magenta, yellow, and cyan. This might be something you're used to. Those are the main colors printers now use. If you study color theory or you know your color theory, this opens up a totally new level of custom colors for you that I don't feel any other brand has done before. And if so, I sure as hell missed it. And I own a lot of paint. Out of the bottle, many of the base colors are absolutely beautiful. They are bright and completely rich in color. But once you throw in the primaries, you get even more flavor, if you will. It's just like the saturation just explodes in real life. I totally see myself using these paints in the future to work on a Sasabi build or a Yak Doga. I feel the star of this line right now is the basic colors set. For instance, look at the yellow. I remember spray painting Mr. Hobby's yellow over a gray primer, obviously Mr. Hobby's primer. And I ended up with this very ugly yellowish green color on my Gundam. I didn't have that issue here. While I was getting ready to spray the yellow on the bare bones gray primer, I thought to myself, this is either gonna look really good or really bad. And I'm surprised, like the second it came out this beautiful yellow, I knew this was just great pigmentation. <laughs> yellow is a very funky color to paint. In most cases, you have to use an orange base to get the yellow to look right. But you know, that's neither here nor there. The metallics I didn't spend too much time on. Cut me some slack, I'm a busy guy. But I feel this will appeal to builders who love metallics. Honestly, I like what I was seeing as I laid down this paint, especially when it came to the gunmetal gray. This may be my favorite gunmetal gray I've ever sprayed. The tonality and the subtlety of the colors is just right. It's not in your face. It's it's hard to explain, but you know it when you see it as a painter. But there is one flaw. I don't think Odin Khan or Dodankin has a clear coat best suited for their metallic colors. I'll test them again with water-based clear coats because Odin Khan's clear kills the look of the dark metal metallics. In my opinion, most lacquer clears do that. When you spray a lacquer clear on a metallic color, sometimes it just like, it changes it you know sometimes you get like the 
the metal flaking sort of rises to the top and you lose all reflectivity of what you just painted. Or in the case of gunmetal, sometimes clears hit the gunmetal and it goes from a gunmetal gray, obviously, to gunmetal purplishy color. So it's something to keep in mind. I did this on purpose to test it so you don't have to find out the hard way later. The candies. I'd say there's about 16 gloss candies and 16 satin candies. The candy colors can be used over any color, but the true test of a candy for me is when you can spray it over a chrome, which Odin Khan has. As far as the chrome goes, it's the easiest chrome I've ever used, but it doesn't really stand out from any of the other brands in my personal opinion. Maybe it was genuinely meant to complement candy colors. I don't know. Maybe I just sprayed it in accurately. Who knows? Now take all of this with a grain of salt. I'm not genic. I haven't mastered the art of spraying chromes or candy chromes for that matter. But I will say this candy chrome dark yellow may be the best I have ever done when it came to spraying a candy chrome. Ironically. Also take into account I didn't have the official black base or the white base used for pearls and candies. So I had to improvise. That could affect results. Future testing may be needed. I did lay down some red satin over a chrome. The difference that I could see with a normal candy, you can achieve this satin look, but you have to spray multiple layers. But the more layers of a candy coat you put over a chrome, the more you lose the reflectivity and the more it sort of dulls out. Whereas too, with the satin color, you get that look in one or two shots without having to kill the overall look you're going for. So that could be the point of a satin versus, once again, I'm not a candy coat master. By the way, the pearl coats are absolutely lovely. That's all I can say about them. Beautiful. I will say that Odin Ka's Glossy Clear is one of the best clear coats I've used. The matte finish is a little bit more satin in my opinion rather than flat flat the other drawback of these paints i will say is it takes them a little longer to dry maybe a few minutes i'm sort of used to lacquers that kind of you know as soon as you're done spraying they're dry within a minute but you know small potatoes the 2k clear has an odd mix ratio of 1 to 1.5 i'm used to a 1 to 3 mix ratio i like whole numbers when it comes to mixing urethane clears the hardener is very thick by the way it's almost jelly like and i'm not really used to such thickness when it comes to an activator for my clears maybe that threw me off and it was a little harder to gauge my measurements the 2k clear did level after i finished spraying but it's not as glassy looking as i'm used to with a 2k clear this could be because i did something wrong it's a strong possibility so I won't really blame the paint once you've mixed this you have a 12 hour window to use the 2k clear so that's something to think about most of the uh 2k clears I use that are urethane based you have like 40 minutes tops I believe before it goes bad so you need to get what you need to get sprayed done quickly but the trade-off I believe is you definitely have to buff this out if you want that glossy mirror finish my final verdict in a world where paints are hard to come by in america if odin khan can fill the ever-growing void i can see them doing very well and growing with time i would recommend the base color line all day and the metallics they are also a great choice the sheer number of candy coats that they have is utterly insane and once again i'm not a candy coat guy who paints chrome metallics to have like a kemper that's mirror blue but i know that there are people out there that love metallics and they paint them all day and they can't get enough of candies and odin khan has a ton of colors to choose from i definitely recommend odin khan paints and i'll reiterate it again i really like the uh basic color line and the fact that you can really get great saturation by putting in just a little bit of magenta in a red and then it just totally transforms into a deeper red which for me i think is great i'm kind of going off the cuff now because if you've mixed paints before and you're trying to do your custom colors you know that getting the right shade of red is such a pain in the ass and being able to get like a deeper richer red with just a few drops from one bottle is crazy for me it's like that's great it's genuinely great 
All that time I wasted in the past on my last Sasabi build could have been cut in half by something so simple because God only knows how many times I've mixed those paints and I just, I was either too dark or it got so light that it turned pink, you know? Well, anyway, enough of me waxing on, not really poetically about my struggles of painting tiny robots first world problems. Yes, I do like Odin Khan paints. Or Odin Ken, Odin Ken? Uh, well, we'll never know. Nobody's paying me to figure out how to say this.